Hello, I'm Sarah. I'm from Monash University. And yep, my project is about defining diets to treat amino acid metabolism disorders. So what is the metabolism? So the metabolism, it's a little bit like a train network. It's a series of interconnected chemical reactions that have a beginning and a destination. And these chemical reactions modify the food that we eat into energy. And at each stop, the reactions are carried out by enzymes, the chemical catalysts of the body. But like the metabolism, the metabolism, sorry, like a train network, doesn't always run. So let's zoom into one part of the network that concerns three amino acids called leucine, isoleucine, and valine. So where do these come from? So amino acids are what make up protein. So every time you eat protein, it gets broken down into amino acids. And the purpose of these amino acids is to be modified step by step uh, to be changed into a form that can be used to generate energy using enzymes at each step along the way. And I had some nice pretty pictures for that. <laughs> but what happens if there is an obstruction on the track? Well, metabolic disease occurs. So not only is there a buildup behind the obstruction there in red, but also there's a deficit at the end of the track. So there's a few ways we can fix this. So we can limit the amount of trains that are coming down the track, valine in this case. We can reroute amino acids by sending them down an alternate track that might not get you to your destination, but at least you're not stranded. Or we can start new trains after the obstruction. And together, these changes help to correct some of the underlying problems in amino acid disorders. So train analogies aside, these are serious debilitating diseases. Overall, amino acids occur in about one in 6,500 births. And you might have even heard of some of the more prevalent ones, like phenylketonuria. And they often start during infancy. So infants suddenly start showing very general symptoms, like weakness, dehydration, or lethargy. And this prolongs diagnosis time. And meanwhile, while the disease progresses, there is damage caused to the brain. So these disorders are kind of, they're caused by a loss of a single gene or enzyme, which means they can be screened for. And then once they're found and diagnosed, patients are routinely placed on dietary therapy to cut out all the natural protein in their diet and replace it with medical food substitutes. So this can be quite restrictive, but it is life-saving. And despite all this, many amino acid disorders still lack treatments. So that's what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about two disorders in the valine pathway that currently lack treatments. And we'll start off with X1 deficiency. So what is X1 deficiency? It's a neurological disorder that's characterized by progressive loss of mental and movement abilities and often manifests very early in life, sometimes days after birth. And the underlying cause of this disease is currently not fully understood, so it's a good candidate for further study in model organisms. And our lab uses the humble fruit fly. And why flies, you might be thinking. Well. Turns out 70% of disease-causing genes are actually conserved between flies and humans, along with some of the more fundamental genes and enzymes, kind of evolution's way of saying, don't fix what isn't broken. Uh, flies have brains, they have hearts, they have stomachs, liver, insulin, so lots of similar systems, and they have a very short life cycle. They, they go from an egg to a larval stage, followed by puperiation, it's like a cocoon, until they emerge and reach adulthood in under two weeks. It's very helpful. So what does X1 deficiency look like in flies? So to do this, we made and used flies that have lost both copies of the X1 gene, as it's a recessive disease. And we want to know, first of all, do they live? So a good and simple measure of viability is asking whether flies successfully puperiate, whether they emerge into that adult fly. It's kind of like a big check mark for development. And I found that no, they do not make it to puperiation and live only long enough, sorry, they die during larval development. So when does this occur? So I recorded their survival and saw that about half of the flies, all these larvae live for about six to seven days. So what I wanna know now is can I improve this with making changes to the diet? So the first thing I tried was valine restriction. 
So this is something that has been trialed in the clinic a handful of times, but it's had kind of inconsistent outcomes. So here I made five different diets, each with a different amount of valine, and I measured survival again. And this time, uh, flies, uh, X1 deficient flies, on diets containing 0%, 25 or 50 percent had a significantly improved survival time. It wasn't enough to help them become adult flies, but it was a nudge in the right direction. So what we've learned from this is basically that restriction alone might not be enough to treat this particular disease. So jumping ahead to Hib deficiency, as I'll call it for short, they have very long chemical enzyme names. So in humans, Hib deficiency and X1 deficiency are fairly similar conditions that have a lot of overlap in their collection of symptoms, suggesting that they might have some similar disease mechanisms, and they are side by side in that pathway after all. So comparative studies of patient cohorts showed that Hib deficiency patients had lower mortality, fewer symptoms, and that disease onset was a bit later. So what does this look like in flies? So I did a similar experiment was done using flies that, again, lack both copies of the gene. And this time we can see that the flies do make it to pupariation, albeit a little more slowly and at a lower rate than the control flies. And similarly, fewer were able to reach the adult stage. So this is now what we're going to try and correct for with the diet. So again, I tried to restrict valine. It used two different treatments this time, and I saw that Losing valine was very much not tolerated by these flies. Dropping down to 50% there in purple caused a really big delay in development in both larvae and in adults. So maybe we're taking away too much. Maybe we need to give back in this scenario. So uh, just a bit of insight here. In Hib deficiency, loss of the Hib enzyme there in red causes a buildup of these two metabolites with very long names. Um, but there's another way we can remove at least one of them. So there's a compound called carnitine that's able to combine with that middle <laughs> metabolite and change its structure, allowing it to be removed and transported elsewhere out of the particular cellular compartment. So I added carnitine to the diet in increasing concentrations to get a sense of what might happen. And we can see that looking at that green line there up the top, the lowest concentration of carnitine was actually able to confer an increase in the number of total pupae. And so that potentially, that rerouting mechanism might be making a difference there. But as it goes with science, things aren't always consistent. So I didn't observe the same effect in adult flies, but hey, it's something. So just bringing it all together, this kind of thing hasn't fully been done before by establishing like full animal model systems for these two particular diseases. There are kind of cell models, but you don't capture the full animal system. And mice models haven't been specifically created or made for these two diseases. So now that I have these fly models established, the groundwork has kind of been done, and we can really go ahead with like large scale diet and drug screens using these models. So I was able to show that these model systems do respond to changes in the diet, and by using this special synthetic diet that has been recently developed for flies. And I trialed treatments that were either trialed in the clinic or suggested by researchers, just the kind of things that are too experimental to test without an animal system. So this is all to learn more about these diseases and bring us closer to finding treatments for individuals with X1 or Hib deficiency. Thank you.